All right, so let's look at more addition polymers. And now we're going to look at cationic addition polymers. So uh, let's again start with a, um, our cationic initiator, which is you know, very often it's something simple, like, like an acid. So let's write AH. You know, normally I write HA, but I want the H on the right, so I'm going to reverse that. And again, we need, uh, we're doing addition reactions, so we're going to have to put alkenes in here as our monomers. And under for cationic polymer, we tend to want an electron donating group on our monomer. And I think if that's confusing to you, I think it'll be clear in just a moment. So here we go. What, how is this going to start? Well, we could treat these um, these polymers with a strong acid. These, I'm sorry, this monomer with a strong acid. Then what will happen is our alkene will become protonated by our strong acid. And tell you what, before we get too much into this, let's you know what are what are uh, our electron donating group? These are oftentimes uh, R groups that are associated with being ortho para directors. Um, so alkyl groups, alkoxy groups, that kind of thing. So what do we get when we do this? We are going to get um, a, a cation on our alkene when we protonate that alkene. Let's explicitly put that hydrogen in place. So what is going to happen to that cation? Well, that cation itself is a new electrophile. In fact, it's a really strong electrophile. And so our weakly nucleophilic alkene from another monomer will attack. EDG, let's keep that hydrogen. That makes a new cation, and of course another monomer can come along and attack. And we get a length and chain. And we could keep on drawing this. And then this might happen 10 times. It might happen 10,000 times. Some of these polymers are incredibly efficient. They just keep going and going. So we now have this polymer chain. How does this end? Well, there are a couple ways that this could end. Maybe there's a nucleophile. Maybe the anion, and we've sort of forgotten it, but um, I'm on the kind of up the left middle. There is the conjugate base of our um, acid. And perhaps if that were a chloride, then the conjugate base could come in and attack. And we would form our polymer, EDG. Ah, that's a mess. Let's go back on that. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay, EDG. Sort of coming off the rails here. I don't know if you can tell that. Okay. So here's our monomer. And we have lots of our monomers incorporated into our chain. We have, how, how many do we have? We have N. And that, like I said, that could be 10. That could be 50. It could be 20,000. It just depends on the particular polymer that's being made. On one end, we have whatever we use as our initiator. We said this is an acidic uh, initiated process. And then maybe, maybe um, our conjugate base does the attack at the end. And that's what completes the polymerization. But this is how we do, this is specifically an addition polymerization, and it's an addition polymerization under cationic conditions. Very similar to anionic conditions, it's just electronically things are reversed. We're making cations instead of anions.